they pulled um, um, uh, uh, the Moors in Spain. But we became tied to them, so therefore we had to do that particular stuff. Because remember now, the white man is ruling now. If we didn't educate him and give him some stuff, you see what he has done with education. He has killed over a billion people. Over a billion people on the planet. Well, well over a billion people. That's a small number. Because he killed half of his race. He's killed over a billion people, killed all the plants, and killed everything on the planet, including the planet. Just think he did this with education. What do you think he would have done without education? You understand what I'm saying? God knows what would have happened. So we had to genetically tie ourselves. And when I say genetically, we had to introduce alchemy in Kemet, uh, alchemy also in Spain to try to give the white man what is called a soul. We'll get into that in a few minutes. Now, what's going on? We need to take this thing all the way back to see how this thing starts in the land of Atlantis. Now, the original name for this particular Atlantis, uh, this particular, this, some people say um, Terra, some people say uh, Hyperborea, but the original name for this particular planet where we had the actual government of the ancient time. Now, we also know at this particular time that they said once we found out that the Sphinx was older than 9,000 years old and they traced it back to 80,000 years old, every little bit of chronology that you know of when you study as far as this old humpback man and this Oscalopithecus and all this stuff, maybe those were the actual genetic races of the white man, but with every little thing that you know when they show you that particular Sphinx, you know that you got to throw out all chronology. Because everything that you know of in actual literal history or uh, what you would call chronology based on what the white man is giving you, you got to throw that out. Also, he would want to give you something that's earlier, no, that's later, that's for the simple fact that he wants you to believe in your mind what is called a catechism of impossibility. The later he gives you history, you would think that the white man was here along with you. So therefore, you would think that since we've always been here with white men, there's no way that you can possibly wipe them off the planet. But if you find out you was here millions of years in civilization, not millions of years where you share problems, you know, you the Hampton Gatherer stage and you hunt lions. We talk about miraculous civilizations. More advanced than what we have in America that went down in Atlantis and North Lemuria. Once you find out that, you'll find out that the white man is only a newcomer. You say, well, hell, if we lived a million something years without him, then therefore he don't have to be around now. Which is one of the keys on the reason why we cannot get our stuff together is because the reason why we compromise and sell out because we think that we got to be with the white man forever. Therefore, you say you got to, we got to live with him. You even hear white people say, we all got to live together. No, we don't have to live together. And we're not going to live together no more other than a next couple of months with this particular beast because we get ready to take him off the planet by 1995 if God's willing, if they grant us to do what we want to do. 98% of the time, the reason why it hasn't transpired up to now because we don't never, we are never ready. You understand? So, this particular time that we talk about Atlantis, that now we know that the history of the Sphinx is 1880, 80 million, excuse me, 80,000 years old, that puts it right back in the middle of Atlantis, we find out one thing. Number one, Kemet was not a colony that sprung up after Atlantis sunk. Kemet, by the Sphinx being old, was actually an uh, actual capital of one of the lands of Atlantis because this all used to be what? One landmass. By it all being one landmass, the sun uh, uh, separated based on continental drill. The reason why we know that is because we have... Did y'all get the book, The Return of the Ancient Ones? Did y'all get that book in? By the Empress? Well, they show you that this black woman owned all the United States of America. Now, as a result of her owning all of the United States of America, we know now that the particular one landmass, we know that black people by being all over the planet, and wherever you go, you go to Japan, you see black people. You go to China, you see ancient black people. You go any place, you even go to Russia, they got black people that's living there. They did not migrate in there. They were the original people that was in there. So therefore, we know that in actuality, this was one landmass. And by it being one landmass, we know that there was no such thing as a Kemet or uh, Egypt springing up after Atlantis sank, we understand that the white man don't want you to know because he understands if it's one landmass, it's got to be one people. Therefore, if it's one people, there's only one people that's the owner of this particular planet, and we don't have to abide by the laws of no niggas. And when I say niggas, I'm talking about the other dog on people on this earth because we own this planet. You understand what I'm saying? So therefore, they understand that this particular one landmass was here, then we know that Egypt, Africa, and all of the rest of that was all one place and all black people 
ones all over the world because we got proof of that in America and wherever you go. And we got the parallel monuments in America and we got the parallel monuments over here and I'm going to get into some things on Jacksonville, Florida that we found out is also substantiating what the Moors of the actual Noble Drew Ali, Noble Drew Ali people are saying that this all was one place and we was equally ancient over here as we were over there. That original land was called al Kimoria. Like I said, these are things that's coming down off the spiritual tube. When the white man lies in his books, we can't, we, we, we get it halfway accurate. Because every now and then he'll slip up. We get it halfway accurate. But when we cannot get the ultimate truth, we go into the spirit. That's why they say, don't listen to what I say. Don't take what I say literal. Check it with your spirit. If I stand up to you and give you some particular information and your spirit says wrong, then you'll know you got to deal with it. But we're not talking, when we say take it, check it with your spirit, we're talking about actually checking it with your spiritual nature and not your intellectual nature because you'll intellectualize white people, you'll intellectualize white people being God if you go by with this white man's particular knowledge. So now the original land was called al Kimoria, Al which means God. Kim a Kim, which means black. And Moria a Mor, which means the Lord of the earth, is where you get the actual root of the Moors. Now, the Moors was not just an Islamic group that came up in Spain. The Moors were a group of black people that was always here because you got the black Moors. They talked about them in Rome. Before Islam even started, they talked about the black Moors in Greece before Islam even started. So if Moor was just an Islamic component, why we have the Moors before then? They, the Moors used Islam to put on the particular European who was too savage to get anything but a dogmatized way of looking at things. And he used Islam because Islam was a mirror of our nature on how we used to act normally before we even had any books even calling it a religion. So this is why they used Islam at that particular time after the 6th century AD, you see, with the whole rise of Muhammad and the whole nine yards, then the Moors came into play. So al Moria is the actual name of that particular time. Now, what happened? We understand now that we're dealing with some things. We understand some people are saying, well, why we see other races of people that they can, they can come in and they can rise up and they can get businesses and they can do all this particular stuff and they can rise up and see the black people, we can't ever do anything. Because spiritually, you are not supposed to rise up as a black economic base equal to the white man in a land of your own. You understand what I'm saying? Capitalism is immorally wrong. It's wrong to charge a person for Food, water, shelter, clothing, and whatever, the basic survival things, which this country is built on, which this is actually stolen property, stolen merchandise, stolen minerals, stolen culture of your people. So therefore, spiritually, you are not supposed to take part in a capitalism of the American way. This is why it never worked for you. It worked for everybody else, but it never worked for you. This is telling you something about you and your own innate nature. Yeah, we have a few pockets of the black Wall Street in the early 20th century. A few black people that did a certain amount of things, but we're talking about a race as a whole. Number one, we now populate about, what, 60 million people. So when we talk about we got to raise stores and we got to do all that, we know by the time we build that kind of conglomerate, the world would have been over, triple times over, for the simple fact that the white man did not raise himself up by capitalism as far as just going and working hard. He stole what he had. You know, black people be saying, you know, the white people come in and the black people let them get over on them by saying, the white people say, we work hard, we can't hear them. The hell, you stole it all. If I come into your doggone house and steal your house, steal your children, steal your furniture, you your doggone mama have an advantage over you. <laughs> and then steal you to work, and then you're going to tell the person that you stole the work and then stole his house that you need the dog going to get up and work like I did because I worked hard. You damn right you worked hard. You worked hard in stealing and keeping it. <laughs> so therefore, the white man didn't have a dog going to jump start on us. He didn't dog going to do all this stuff that he telling you you need to do. He didn't do none of that. But see, by us not having history, we sit up and we quote these dog on things so the actual black bull 
is why he said that niggas don't want to work for nothing. You can't never work and steal the kind of stuff that this white man has got. This white man stole the entire earth. Right. Well, anyway, that's against humanity anyway. You understand where I'm coming from? So therefore, the whole capitalism thing is a doggone joke. You see. So now, dealing with these particular things, it was not meant for you to be the way you are. So quit fronting on looking at the white boy and saying why I'm not like him. That's the Lord's manifestation on earth. A man that steals his own way into power. And then by maintaining that power, he kills everything around him, the dog on planet, the fish, the animals, the even going out in space. You don't want to be like that because we always take the moral high ground. Not like Jesse Jackson said. We're not talking about being no bootlicking and book dancing niggas like Martin Luther King. You understand? Excuse me, I don't want to attack the dead and the whole nine yards, but like they say, they use this particular man, and you know the whole nine yards on that particular thing. Martin Luther King was a savior for white people, not for us. He told white people, this is where things need to be done, and will you do this, and that was the best savior they ever had. And as a matter of fact, every time you get in an argument, they always bring up his name also, too, because they know what their own time it is also, too. Now, the whole key to that is the reason why that will not work for you and the reason why some of the Afrocentric people are saying you need to go back and be like the people in Africa and Egypt. That's not good enough for you. Because remember, at this particular time you were a fallen people when you built Kemet and all the greatest civilizations that we built in our fallen things that the white man hadn't even been able to duplicate to this time. And he's trying to duplicate it by throwing up New York and trying to outdo Egypt by throwing up his empire. I'm going to throw up my buildings higher than the doggone Pharaoh. And as a result, the doggone planet, because he put all these tall buildings on it, has got a wobble in it. So now the spacecraft got to come in just to tear down all those particular buildings. That's why New York is getting ready to go. And remind me of that because we're going to get into that in a few minutes also too. Now, the reason why you cannot just go back to Kemet, because Kemet is how you were after you got trapped into this third dimension. At one time, you were the gods on the planet. And everything that a god that you know of, that you read in mythology does, that can do that, you used to do that particular stuff too. That's why Jesus said, just as I have done great works, this is nothing. I'm playing with a few little magic I've learned out of the mystery system. Greater work you shall do, which means that you are going back to the godhead that you used to be in Atlantis, in the warrior, and even before then, before you even came on the planet. But what does that mean? That means you see everything those animals can do. One animal can disappear. One animal can transform. One animal can, can, can live up under water. One animal can live up under the earth. One animal can, can live in the dirt. One animal can do all these things. One animal can fly. Everything that the animal can do, you can do also if you tap into your particular godhood. That's why, like I said before, we was talking about, that's why you got to go get the movie Thunderheart. With Val Kilmer came out with what first part of... of, of of 92. You gotta go get that movie, Thunderheart. Because in the movie they simply state that these are the events that happened on an Indian reservation in the early 1970s. But yet they got a brother named, a revolutionary figure named Jimmy, he turning into birds. He turning into doggone rattlesnakes. Right. Called shape shifting. Because they can really do these things. This is the kind of power we talking about having. We talking about the kind of power to make tornadoes. We talking about the power to make rain. Don't you see the Indians doing? We talking the kind of power to 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 bring down empires and throw up empires. This is the kind of science that we used to do when we were on the Godhead that we cannot even conceive of now because it even sounds like some hocus pocus thing. But remember, truth is stranger than fiction. You understand? And by us being 180 degrees from the truth, it's not just to say, man, know thyself, just know your history. It's man, know thyself, that is it not written in your Lord, hear God, that Jesus Christ said, because you are a microcosm of the macrocosm. So you mean to tell me that there's an earth realm up there? What's they tell you in this particular Aton? And it has, Aton has certain rays. Uh, uh, did you, where is that book? If you, it's on all the pictures, we'll pass it around again. Just put it on the first page. If you see this, you see Aton has certain rays. This represents God serious. You see these rays is touching you, mainly in your particular melanin, and putting you to the rays, and so you are a solar product of the greater product. You are the microcosm of the microcosm. 
So if that God up there is capable of doing everything, if you are the smaller microcosmic embodiment of that God, you can do the same doggone things too. Now that's not saying that you are the universal prime creator, but you see these particular hands right here, these particular rays, you are one of these rays. Do you understand that? You can see that? You are one of these rays, so therefore you have the capability of doing what this particular person is doing. But you are not this person, but you are right here these rays, so that makes you the microcosm of the macrocosm. So therefore, what we're saying is the reason why you are not able to function even on this planet at this particular time because you have outgrown this planet in a third dimensional content, context or a third dimensional di density or a third dimensional vibratory rate. You are fourth dimensional people and every time you dance or, 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 or you throw a basketball and Michael Jordan will stop in mid air and do things and different things you do, it's showing that you are not just capable of the realm that you live in. You are capable of greater realms even in your thought process because the melanin is a greater thing that's in the embodiment of you. Okay? So therefore we're talking about everything that you can think of in your mind, you can do with your physical body and your spiritual body. And these are the realms of the God that we used to be. Now what had happened was because our earth is a fallen planet that fell from the realm of Sirius and fell into what is called a third dimension, our spiritual center shut down. And as a result, we got trapped in the third dimension and our brothers and sisters that we talk about the great hierarchy got separated from us. So when we deal in the spirit world, we are only making a telephone call to our brothers and sisters that we once used to be like before we got limited to a physical body shutdown. But what we're talking about as the earth goes into another birthday and goes to another realm, what we're talking about is us regaining what we used to have in those times when you used to run as a god, as Manepto said. Well, who used to rule before Egypt as the, the Greeks told me? So that's when a whole bunch of gods used to rule, our ancestors who had the capabilities of doing more than what we did and this is why we used to have the mystery system to raise a person back up to that God level. So therefore the reason why we cannot function and we can't get nothing together is because God wants us to do something greater than just own a society. And the white man has done that. He's done a sloppy job but he's still running things. But you are supposed to be a God. You're supposed to be superior than the dog on mute. So therefore by you supposed to be superior you're supposed to have the full apex of what you used to be because if the earth takes a swing back to the original um, place of what it's supposed to be then you're supposed to be the original people. The original people were not the Egyptians, the original which is just a person walking around like you who has the knowledge to raise itself up to God. The original people were gods. That's what's called the Elohim or the fallen sons of Seth in your book of Enoch that they took out of the Bible. The reason why you don't understand this particular thing because they took the book of Enoch out. Or they would call these fallen ones that they talk about in the Bible. This particular fallen, this particular Lucifer. Lucifer means light bringer. And then what is it? He fell from God. It's just that our particular earth fell from God. So therefore, we are the fallen ones. Check. Everybody with me at this particular time. So at that particular time, it was called Al Camoria was the name. And we got shut down. Now. We know now that this particular moral thing we talk about, that it was one land match because we got this woman that owned all this land now. And as a matter of fact, she owned this particular land. Now they got one thing that's getting ready to go down. But one thing is, is the white man is already owned it because they gave her Monroe, Louisiana. But she owns all of this. They said, well, to be right, they gave her Monroe, Louisiana. Now that, I said, now that sounds sound kind of strange to me. White man ain't never gave us nothing. All of a sudden, he's just going to get up off some land. But... I done found out another key that she hooked up with the doggone AWOS and the aliens just like I'm hooked up with it and just like now you all are all hooked up with it. When y'all build y'all altar and start pouring them libations, y'all gonna have all the juice you want. Alright? Now, the Delta Force has already pulled away from the government. Because you know how it is with white people, they are opportunists. They say, we gonna go down, we gonna go down with a fight. So some of these white people, even the Ku Klux Klan, they're saying the Ku Klux Klan is a bigger threat to the United States and the skinheads just like the Nation of Islam. Because now the Ku Klux Klan is saying we ain't going to be poor, not for nobody, especially not even for white people. So if we're going to be, if we're going to be controlled, and white people are saying there ain't going to be no slave, they're saying we're going to burn this place down and let the doggone 
root and powers of the new world order have what they're going to have. So as a result, the Delta Force, which was, the, was one of the main combat forces of the United States, is already pulled away from the government. They went over to Europe and seized some gold and brought this gold back to, I think, to the United States and put it in the Fort Knox and now they're guarding it. Now they went to the, to the actual empress, this black woman. This is how powerful things are going down. They said, listen, if we fight to get your land and get you declared the ruler of your land again, can we squat on your land and have a safe haven for what's getting ready to go down? She said, cool. Y'all gonna do the stuff? Hey, cool. She said, I mean, she know, she know white people opportunity, but say, hey, you know, this, her thing is bigger than that, so they can't shit the gods. You understand? So then she said, cool. So now they're saying is this, when the Rothschilds, the Vanderbilts, the Japanese, and all these people come back and say, we own this now because America broke and we coming to, 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 to collect on the debt, then the Delta Force is going to stand up and say, hey, look, you can't do that. They say, why? They say, because you don't own the land. The land is owned by Empress Vertice, this black woman in Monroe, Louisiana. So they're saying they're getting ready to back her, and this will give them, justify them, so they can get up and start fighting. And this is the information that she came down for Christmas, and I saw it all documented and written out. And this is the ju juice that's getting ready to go out. So we don't even have to need the white man. The reason why they're doing this is because they understand that she's hooked up with AWAS. AWAS is a tall black man in his 30s. The same brother that is hooked up with me since the last weekend in October and the day that I met him in the, his spiritual thing. And the sister identified, said this man, this tall black man in his 30s with some Arab dress is behind you. Well, the same day I met the Empress. And I didn't put it all together. But when she came back down and told me, look, brother, I know he was too. And I said, oh, that is right. You were the first day I met you when you came to Atlanta to speak was the same day I met this AWAS fella who's supposed to be the embodiment of God, a Donnie or Aton or whatever you want to call him. I met him in the Space Metaphysical Bookstore when a sister come in, a psychic sister came in and started quoting the same thing that I done read in the book two weeks ago about this particular angelic host who is supposed to be one of the most ancient gods. She said, I'm down with AWAS too. And she said, remember I told you of the story. She said, the government was getting ready to indict me. They had a list of things that was going to indict me for. They was going to put, indict me and send me to jail on a Tuesday. Two days before that, no, uh, I think three or four days before that, uh, what happened was this particular um, alien came in her door, came in her front door, came through the wall. And she said, her, the government already done cut off all of her um, electricity. She, and the alien said, sit down to the, a black man, she said, a tall black man, say, sit down to the typewriter and type out this particular thing. So she said, I can't type it out because the typewriter is electric and you cut off all electricity. They, and the government cut off all electricity. He said, just go and sit down and start typing. She sat down and start typing and this particular typewriter started working. Then she told, he told, him to send this, told her to send this particular letter to Washington, D.C. When she sent the letter to Washington, D.C., the woman called her about three days later and said, well, I don't know what you did, but I'm just getting ready to send out an indictment on you. She said, but everything that I was going to indict you for, you got an explanatory uh, explanation for everything that I was going to indict you for. You got an explanation on this paper, now we can't indict you. So now she's hooked up with this, and the reason why they had to give her one to Louisiana because the, because the white man already know that this stuff, he's getting ready to get rocked by the, extra, the, 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 the powers above, and so, so and, and they know that they got a little bit of time left, a couple of months. But they don't want a doggone chance that because the people can come in overnight and take this thing back. You understand what I'm saying? From that realm, but we're going to take it back from this realm. Now you all stick with me. So, these are some things that's going on. Now, We've already identified in my previous lectures that I don't want to go into the whole thing about this creation of the white man. You can get some of my previous lectures that I talk about that mainly the human artificials and all. What you want to do? You want to, you want to, huh? Is it, is it really the time for a break? Yeah. Hmm? Well, an hour and a half. On the tape? Exactly. It's up for you. So I'm just saying, what, 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 okay, let's see. Boom, boom, boom. You want to take one now? Or you want to take one later? Hmm? You want to take 50 minutes now? In about 15 minutes. Okay, we must end this part. Then we'll take it. I want some of my takes.
talk about this creation of the white man that we got the actual documents from Emory University and other ones that I put in this book, The Human Artificial, but if you don't want to read the book, you can get the tape where they talk about this white man being a created man that we got from Emory University that they sent to the black preachers down in Atlanta and they didn't know what they had for 10 years. I don't want to get into the whole story. But I would like Muhammad said, which is in the temple of Seti one where the Egyptians straight out say we created them. Now, I'm glad that Muhammad said that when we talk about the white man being created in the 6,000 year history, we're not talking about what happened in the other 26,000 year period. Our earth, our earth goes around the sun every 365 days. Our sun goes around a greater sun every 26,000 years. After 26,000 years, this is what you get, what is called a great year. Or the end of an eon, or the, or the, the, the Christian misconstrue as the end of the world. It just means whatever world is ruling, if it ain't right, it's coming down, which we know the beast is on its way out. So that 26,000 year period, Kemet went through five of those things. If Kemet went through five of that, that means that Kemet had to be in existence along with Atlantis and Lemuria, it was all called Al Kamori. If you get the secret doctrines, where J.L. Matthew is talking about in the secret doctrines, and she quotes from one of his books, Natural Genesis, on an article called The Type Out of Your Time, that Kemet went through five of those in the secret doctrines. Now, which is by Blavatsky. Now, at this particular time, this 26,000 year period, he said that when I talk about the creation of the white man in 6,000 years ago, I'm not talking about the creation of this particular white man in other 26,000 year period. I'm talking about him in this 26,000 year period. You see what I'm saying? He said, so this is what we talk about in 6,000 years. They said, yeah, he's probably been on the planet before, and he comes on the planet every time we need to take a planet and a fall. Now, the thing about it when we was talking about Gerald Massey, well, why would dog on AWAS come and reveal a book, which is the second phase of the part two of the book of coming forth by day, us, and this particular black God come and reveal a book to him? Well, come to find out that he was a guy by the name of Elipius Levi in the 1800s, and the year he died, he reincarnated and was born again as Alistair Crowley. He was also a particular person that was around the time of Muhammad. Now we need to get into this reincarnation history because this is very important. But this is something that the actual alien said that what you got to do is to try to tap into too. And we'll tell you how to do this. You got to find out who you were in the ancient time to identify what kind of on the Godhead and on the ships you get ready to do when you fight the war. Now, he was also a guy by the name of Ankenes, um, Anken Kunsu was his name in ancient Kemet. And I think it was the 22nd or one, one of the 20th dynasties, late 20th dynasties. He was this particular priest. And he's on this particular stellar, and he's a picture of this particular man. He was this particular person. And so when he came, so when he went to Cairo Kemet with vacationing with his wife, now Alice Crawley is this particular white man and this particular occultist that did all the ceremonial magic, was the greatest ceremonial magician in Europe or uh, in England in the, in the, in the early 1900s, no, early 20th century, all the way up to 1947 when he died. He went to Europe, he went to Kemet or Egypt, and this particular person said, Horace, who is a form of Awas, is waiting for you, because his wife kept going in the trance. That's when he, she, he found this, she said, what, what, what's been sort of in you? And he found this particular stellar. On this stellar, or on this slate came out, coming out of Egypt, is a picture of this particular priest. Now, Jeshua, Jesus, Jeshua ben Pandera, it means Jeshua, which means son of, Pandera meant, which means the actual panther skins that the priesthood or the Essenes or the Gnostic cult used to wear. So he was a son of a priesthood. You understand? That particular Jesus that you know of as Jesus the Christ, who was anointed with the level of Christ because everybody in the priesthood was the level of Christ. But he didn't spend that long in it because you had to spend 40 something years in it and he only spent what? A couple of years before he went back and this is probably the reason why his life got put out in, in Palestine because he wasn't all the way to the priesthood of what he supposed to do, but he did obtain the Christ level. So whatever, I don't know the reason why he died or whatever for you or whatever. The whole key of this whole thing is, and they say that the Jesus is a composite character of other Christ figures that set in motion mainly to control the people on dogmatized religion, is what the aliens have said. We'll get into that in a few minutes. But this particular person is supposed to be Alistair Crawley in Kemet. So when he, when, when this particular, now remember now, White people bear witness by this, and this stuff is accurate. You see, this stuff here is not this, 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 this stuff is not dealing with just some regular little old mythological story. They got, I mean, they got organizations on the OTO and stuff in England, and this stuff is true. We talking about big time masonry. 
graduate schools of masonry. So we know that them are the people that run the country, so this stuff is real. This is one of the graduate schools of masonry. This particular person is him when he was in Kenny. He was a black person at that particular time, and well, why did he become white? Because eventually he would have to become white. You can pass that around if you want to, if you want to show it to him. Why did he become white? Remember, 20% of white people do have melanin. This my water. Do have melanin, and they can do things on higher levels that other people can't do. Because Richard King tell you that in his book, African Origins of Biological Psychiatry. He said it's only 80% that have a calcified pineal gland that doesn't secrete melanin. But melanin doesn't necessarily indicate your skin color because you can be the lightest, white, bright, damn near white and still have that black stuff, that black substance in you. And most black people, we understand. That's why the white man was sure when he said one drop of black blood, you black. He knew what he was talking about because of the melanin, which is actually the soul. So if you don't have it, you don't have no soul. And we'll get into it in a few minutes. Now, what had happened was they said that the mutant was created, ten, um, created also on the second phase, in, or the first phase in Atlantis. Well, going back to the spiritual sister, I said, well, what's this deal on Alistair Crawley? She said, no, Alistair Crawley was a black priest in Atlantis. And what happened was he had his hand on creating that first mutant, which is the white man, which is a mutated form. And said, as a karma result, he became one of his own creations in the late 1800s. <laughs> he became one of his own creations. So therefore, by him doing that, karmically, he had to put white people, because white people was trying to get this cut off date between a certain time up to 1914. So he was the person that was reincarnated back to put white people or even give them a chance to save themselves by giving them a book, the Book of Law, which is the alchemical breakdown of the black man and black woman's body, the autonomy of the body of God. And by studying this with rituals, they might be able to get some melanin and save themselves. So comically, he had to reincarnate and he became one of his creations and the reason why he became one of his creations because he had to work with white people and we know that white people in the late 1800s was not going to let black people work with them because they had taken the country and we were in slavery so the people it had, he had to be born in an actual Masonic structure in Europe to get the job done but he was one of the people in Atlantis that created the first mutant and if you get all of the Blavatsky and all of the secret society stuff they talk about the black magicians in Atlantis which was talking about black people who created the first mutant. And he was one of those particular people that created the particular first mutant. And as a result, comically, he had to come back and do this particular thing. And so this is some things that actually went on. Now, let's go on because um, we're going to deal with this, some things that's going down before we go into the alien agenda. You want to stop now? Okay, we want to stop now. When we come back, we're going to deal with the alien agenda and some things that is on the actual plane that's going down also, too, on this alien agenda. All right? Everybody all right? Yes, sir.